A Drifting Petal by Mary McNeil Fenelosa Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica If I, a thirst by a stream, Should kneel with never a blossom or bud in sight, Till down on the theme of its liquid night, The moon-white tip of a sudden keel, A fairy-boat should dawn and float to my hand, As only the gods deserve, The cloud-like curve, the loosened sheaf, the ineffable pink of a lotus leaf i should know i should feel that far away on the dimpled rim of a brighter day a thought had blossomed and shaken free one sheath of its innermost soul for me end of poem this recording is in the public domain ephemera by hazel hall there is a woman who makes my eye a place of shadows, as now and then I see her dimly going by, and faintly coming back again. She moves as many others move, there is no utterance in her tread, to tempt an echo, nor to prove what other footsteps have not said. As often as she comes and goes, she is forgotten, as now and then the wind is forgotten until it blows. A blur of dust down the street again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. An epilogue by Wilfred Wilson Gibson. Read for LibriVox.org by Philippa Willits. Ghosts of my fathers, while you keep on ghostly hills your ghostly sleep, if for a moment you should turn the pages of this book to learn what trade your offspring's taken to forgive me that my flocks and herds are only barren bleating words end of poem this recording is in the public domain flying fish by mary mcneil fenelosa read for LibriVox.org by clarica out where the sky and the sky-blue sea merge in a mist of sheen, there started a vision of silver things, a leap and a quiver, a flash of wings, the sky and the sea between. Is it of birds from the blue above, or fish from the depths that be? Or is it the ghosts in silver hosts of birds that were drowned at sea? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Frog by Hilaire Bellet. Read for LibriVox.org by Philip Willits. Be kind and tender to the frog, and do not call him names, as Slimy Skin or Pollywog, or likewise Ugly James, or Gaffer Grin, or Toad Gone Wrong, or Billy Bandy Knees. The frog is justly sensitive to epithets like these. No animal will more repay a treatment kind and fair, at least so lonely people say who keep a frog, and by the way, they are extremely rare. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The House by Ralph Waldo Emerson, read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. There is no architect can build as the muse can. She is skillful to select the materials for her plan. Slow and warily to choose rafters of immortal pine, or cedar incorruptible, worthy her design. She treads dark alpine forests, or valleys by the sea, In many lands with painful steps, ere she can find a tree. She ransacks mines and ledges and quarries every rock, To hew the famous adamant for each eternal block. She lays her beams in music, in music every one, to the cadence of the whirling world which dances round the sun. 
so that they shall not be displaced by lapses or by wars but for the love of happy souls outlive the newest stars end of poem this recording is in the public domain letters by ralph waldo emerson read for LibriVox.org by alan davis drake every day brings a ship every ship brings a word well for those who have no fear looking seaward well assured that the word the vessel brings is the word they wish to hear end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Men Behind the Guns by John Jeremy Rooney Read for LibriVox.org by Arrowit A cheer and a salute for the Admiral, and here's to the Captain Bold, and never forget the Commodore's debt when the deeds of might are told. They stand to the deck through the battle's wreck when the great shells roar and screech, and never they fear when the foe is near to practice what they preach. But off with your hat and three times three for Columbia's true blue sons, the men below who batter the foe, the men behind the guns. O oh, light and merry of heart are they when they swing into port once more, when with more than enough of the greenback stuff they start for their leave ashore. And you'd think, perhaps, that the blue blouse chaps who loll along the street are a tender bit with some salt on it for some fierce moustache to eat, some warrior bold with straps of gold who dazzles and fairly stuns the modest worth of the sailor boys, the lads who serve the guns. But say not a word till the shot is heard that tells the fight is on, till the long deep roar grows more and more from the ships of Yank and Don, till over the deep the tempest sweep of fire and bursting shell, and the very air is a mad despair in the throes of a living hell. Then down, deep down in the mighty ship, unseen by the midday suns, you'll find the chaps who are giving the raps, the men behind the guns. Oh, well they know the cyclones blow that they loose from their cloud of death, and they know as heard the thunder word their fierce ten-incher seth. The steel decks rock with a lightning shock, and shake with a great recoil, and the sea grows red with the blood of the dead, and reaches for his spoil. But not till the foe has gone below, or turns his prow and runs, shall the voice of peace bring sweet release to the men behind the guns. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Merlin's Song by Ralph Waldo Emerson Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake 1. Of Merlin wise I learned a song. Sing it low or sing it loud. It is mightier than the strong and punishes the proud. I sing it to the surging crowd. Good men it will calm and cheer. Bad men it will chain and cage. In the heart of the music peals a strain which only angels hear. Whether it waken joy or rage, hushed myriads hark in vain. Yet they who hear it shed their age and take their youth again. 2. Hear what British Merlin sung of keenest eye and truest tongue. Say not, the chiefs who first arrive usurp the seats for which all strive. The forefathers this land who fought failed to plant the vantage ground. Ever from one who comes to-morrow men wait their good and truth to borrow. But wilt thou measure all thy road, see thou lift the lightest load who has little to him who has less can spare and thou cindillon's son beware ponderous gold and stuffs to bear to falter ere thou thy task fulfil only the light-armed climb the hill the richest of all lords is use the ruddy heath the loftiest muse live in the sunshine swim the sea Drink the wild air's salubrity. 
when the star canopy shines in may shepherds are thankful and nations gay the music that can deepest reach and cure all ill is cordial speech mask thy wisdom with delight toy with the bow yet hit the white of all wit's uses the main one is to live well with who has none end of poem this recording is in the public domain money by w h davies read for librivox dot org by leanne howlett when i had money money oh i knew no joy till i went poor for many a false man as a friend came knocking at my door then felt i like a child that holds a trumpet that he must not blow because a man is dead i dared not speak to let this false world know much have i thought of life and seen how poor men's hearts are ever light and how their wives do hum like bees about their work from morn till night so when i hear these poor ones laugh and see the rich ones coldly frown poor men think i need not go up so much as rich men should come down when i had money money oh my many friends proved all untrue but now i have no money oh my friends are real though very few end of poem this recording is in the public domain the park by ralph waldo emerson read for librivox dot org by alan davis drake the prosperous and beautiful to me seem not to wear the yoke of conscience masterful which galls me everywhere i cannot shake off the god on my neck he makes his seat i look at my face in the glass my eyeballs his eyeballs meet enchanters enchantresses your gold makes you seem wise the morning mist within your grounds more proudly rolls more softly lies yet spake yon purple mountain yet said yon ancient wood that night or day that love or crime leads all souls to the good end of poem this recording is in the public domain the pixidanthera by augusta cooper bristol read for librivox dot org by erwitt sweet child of april i have found thy place of deep retirement where the low swamp ferns curl upward from their sheaths and lichens creep upon the fallen branch and mosses dark deepen and brighten where the ardent sun doth enter with restrained and chastened bean and the light cadence of the bluebird's song doth falter in the cedar there the spring in gratitude hath wrought the sweet surprise and marvel of thy unobtrusive bloom most perfect symbol of my purest thought a thought so close and warm within my heart no words can shape its secret and no prayer can breathe its sacredness be thou my type and breathe to one who wanders here at dawn the deep devotion which transcending speech lights all the folded silence of my heart as thy sweet beauty doth the shadow here so let thy clusters brighten star on star of pink and white about his lingering feet till dreaming and enchanted there shall pass into his life the story that my soul hath given thee so shall his will be stirred to purest purpose and divinest deed, and every hour be touched with grace and light. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. She Walks in Beauty by Lord Byron Read for LibriVox.org by Rich Myers She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies, and all that's best of dark and bright meet in her aspect and her eyes, 
thus mellowed to the tender light which heaven to gaudy day denies. One ray the more, one shade the less, had half impaired the nameless grace which waves in every raven tress, or softly lightens o'er her face, where thoughts serenely sweet express how pure, how dear their dwelling place. And on that cheek and o'er that brow, so soft, so calm, yet eloquent, the smiles that win, the tints that glow, but tell of days in goodness spent, a mind at peace with all below, a heart whose love is innocent. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet number two by William Shakespeare, read for LibriVox.org by Kalinda in Dover, New Hampshire, on July 9th, 2007. When forty winters shall besiege thy brow, and dig deep trenches in thy beauty's field, thy youth's proud livery so gazed on now will be a tattered weed of small worth held. Then, being asked where all thy beauty lies, where all the treasure of thy lusty days, to say within thine own deep sunken eyes were an all-eating shame and thriftless praise. How much more praise deserved thy beauty's use, if thou couldst answer, this fair child of mine shall sum my count and make my old excuse, proving his beauty by succession thine. This were to be new made when thou art old, and see thy blood warm when thou feel'st it cold. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Syncophantic Fox and the Gullible Raven by Guy Wetmore Carroll Read for LibriVox.org by Erwitt A raven sat upon a tree, and not a word he spoke, for his beak contained a piece of brie, or maybe it was roquefort. Well, make it any kind you please. At all events it was a cheese. Beneath the tree's umbrageous limb a hungry fox sat smiling. He saw the raven watching him, and spoke in words beguiling. J'amirai, said he, tombe plumage the which was simply persiflage. Two things there are, no doubt you know, to which a fox is used. A rooster that is bound to crow, a crow that's bound to roost, and whichsoever he espies, he tells the most unblushing lies. Sweet fowl, said he, I understand, you're more than merely natty. I hear you sing to beat the band and Adelina Patty. Pray render with your liquid tongue a bit from Goter de Marung. This subtle speech was aimed to please the crow, and it succeeded. He thought no bird in all the trees could sing as well as he did. In flattery completely doused, he gave the jewel song from Faust. But gravitation's law, of course, as Isaac Newton showed it, exerted on the cheese its force, and elsewhere soon bestowed it. In fact, there is no need to tell what happened when to earth it fell. I blush to add that when the bird took in the situation, he said one brief emphatic word, unfit for publication. The fox was greatly startled, but he only sighed and answered, Tut! The moral is, a fox is bound to be a shameless sinner, and also, when the cheese comes round, you know it's after dinner. But, what is only known to few, the fox is after dinner, too. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Eva by Ralph Waldo Emerson Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake O fair and stately maid, whose eyes were kindled in the upper skies at the same torch that lightened mine. For so I must interpret still thy sweet dominion o'er my will, a sympathy divine. Ah, let me blameless gaze upon features that seem at heart my own, nor fear those watchful sentinels who charm the more their glance forbids chaste glowing underneath their lids with fire that draws while it repels end of poem this recording is in the public domain
to the virgins to make much of time by robert herrick read for LibriVox.org by karen savage gather you rosebuds while ye may old time is still a flying and this same flower that smiles to-day to-morrow will be dying the glorious lamp of heaven the sun the higher he's a-getting the sooner will his race be run and nearer he's to setting that age is best which is the first when youth and blood are warmer but being spent the worse and worst time still succeed the former then be not coy but use your time and while ye may go marry for having lost but once your prime you may for ever tarry end of poem this recording is in the public domain the tropics by douglas b w sladen love we the warmth and light of tropic lands the strange bright fruit the feathery fan-spread leaves the glowing mornings and the mellow trees the strange shells scattered on the golden sands the curious handiwork of eastern hands the little carts ambled by hump-backed beeves the narrow outrigged native boat with cleaves unscathed the surf outside the coral strands love we the blaze of color the rich red of broad tiled roof and turban the bright green of plantain frond and paddy field nor dread the fierceness of the noon the sky serene the chillless air quaint sights and tropic trees seem like a dream fulfilled of lotus ease end of poem this recording is in the public domain what is to come by william ernest henley read for LibriVox.org by leanne howlett what is to come we know not but we know that what has been was good was good to show better to hide and best of all to bear we are the masters of the days that were we have lived we have loved we have suffered even so shall we not take the ebb who had the flow life was our friend now if it be our foe dear though it spoil and break us need we care what is to come let the great winds their worst and wildest blow or the gold weather round us mellow slow we have fulfilled ourselves and we can dare and we can conquer though we may not share in the rich quiet of the afterglow what is to come end of poem this recording is in the public domain When the Great Grey Ships Come In by Guy Wetmore Carroll Read for LibriVox.org by Arrowit To eastward ringing, to westward winging, o'er mapless miles of sea, On winds and tides the gospel rides that the furthermost isles are free, And the furthermost isles make answer, harbor and height and hill. Breaker and beach cry each to each, tis the mother who calls, be still. Mother, new-found beloved, and strong to hold from harm, Stretching to these across the seas the shield of her sovereign arm, Who summoned the guns of her sailor sons, Who bade her navies roam, Who calls again to the leagues of Maine, And who calls them this time home. And the great gray ships are silent, And the weary watchers rest, The black cloud dies in the august skies, And deep in the golden west, Invisible hands are limbing a glory of crimson bars, And far above is the wonder of a myriad wakened stars. Peace, as the tidings silence a strenuous cannonade, Peace at last to the bugle blast, the length of the long blockade, And eyes of vigil weary are lit up with a glad release. From ship to ship and from lip to lip it is peace, thank God for peace. Ah, in the sweet hereafter, Columbia still shall show, The sons of these who swept the seas, how she bade them rise and go. How, when the stirring summons smote on her children's ear, South and north at the call stood forth, and the whole land answered here, for the soul of the soldier's story, and the heart of the sailor's song, are all of those who meet their foes, as right as should meet with wrong, who fight their guns till the foeman runs, and then on the decks they trod, brave faces raise, and give the praise to the grace of their country's God. Yes, it is good to battle, and good to be strong and free, to carry the hearts of a people to the uttermost ends of sea, 
to see the day steal up the bay where the enemy lies in wait, to run your ship to the harbor's lip and sink her across the strait. But better the golden evening when the ship's round heads for home, and the long gray miles slip swiftly past in a swirl of seething foam, and the people wait at the heaven's gate to greet the men who win. Thank God for peace, thank God for peace, when the great gray ships come in. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.